Hello, it's me, Joe, again. And uh, in this video, I'm going to explain how we play right hand flams and left hand flams. Now, a flam is the sound that we make when we play two strokes almost exactly at the same time, but not quite. Sounds like that. Uh, the word flam is onomatopoeic. It's meant to represent the sound that we make. Flam. Flam. Or you could say clap. And we want to hear that sound. Two sounds almost exactly at the same time, but not quite. And uh, the reason for playing a flam is to add a little bit of thickness to the sound when we're striking a drum, so that instead of just hearing the one impact or blow, if you like, that extra little note just gives it a little uh, weight and presence. OK, now, the flam obviously is comprised of two strokes. Um, I've taught you how to play these two strokes already. Uh, if you look at my previous videos, I've introduced playing the full stroke, the full rebound stroke, where we let the stick bounce through 90 degrees. Uh, and I've also explained how to play taps, which are these little strokes here, where we play soft notes, and we're bouncing the stick, and letting the hand help a little bit as well. Okay, so a flam comprises a full stroke with one hand, and a little tap with the other. Okay, the, the, the sound that I'm making, the soft stroke that I'm making that's a tap is called a grace note. And a grace note is a note that adds something to the main note, but doesn't really have its own identity. So the rebound stroke, the full stroke, has, you know, it's the boss here. This is the note that counts. Okay, when we're counting, we're thinking about this as being the note. And this is just adding a little something extra. It's a grace note. Get your hands into this position to start. I, I'll, just, I'll just go over this again, actually. I don't think you can do this too much. But just to remind yourself how to position yourself, even though I've explained this in the other videos already, it's always good to remember. Let your hands dangle. Bring the forearms forward like so, so that your hands are about elbows width apart and your arms are parallel to the floor and parallel to each other like this. Okay, then pick up your sticks, right? And then you need to get one stick pointing up at the ceiling and the other stick's just going to be hovering above your pad or your drum. And in order to play a flam properly, um, again, we heard that the sticks land on the pad almost exactly at the same time, but not quite. But luckily, you don't have to think about the timing to make this work correctly. Because my, in this case, left stick is very close to the pad and the right stick is pointing up at the ceiling, the difference in distance between the two will automatically give you a flam if you move both hands at the same time. And that's what we're going to do. So you position your sticks and play your stroke. And you should get a perfect sounding flam. Now, you can fine tune the strokes that you're playing in due course. There are flams that are quite open where there's a big distance, relatively speaking, between the strokes, and you can kind of tighten them up as well so the notes are closer together. And when you're playing the drum set, you're not necessarily going to play a flam using a full stroke like this. You might find yourself playing flams like so more often. It depends on the circumstances. But for the purpose of learning this nicely, we're going to use these two very different size strokes. Okay? And that's it. This is called a right hand flam. My right hand is playing the dominant note here. Okay, a tap and a full stroke at the same time, almost exactly, but not quite. All right, pretty straightforward. Next, we're going to reverse the hands. We're going to play a left hand flam. The left hand is now the dominant stick playing the dominant note. And here we go. Both hands move together. Clap, clap. And that's it. Those are flams. Now, in my video about the taps, I explained that we want to try and get the hang of playing the tap like so, that we just tap the stick into the pad and bring it back again. And we want to avoid this little preemptive cocking back of the hand like so, right? And the ten tendency is to do that. I find myself, if I'm not paying attention, I do that as well. And we're, when we practice the taps, we're going to check that we're just throwing the stick down at the pad and bringing it back to where it started without that little raising of the hand 
happening first. And when we're playing flam, uh, it's very important to try and keep that in mind, okay? Uh, most students, when they're beginning to, to, to learn how to play flams, uh, I find that this tends to happen. You start off playing nice little taps, and for each flam, the lower stick playing the grace note gets higher and higher until you end up doing something like that. Now, okay, I'm kind of still producing a flam, um, but we want to really get used to this little distinction between the two strokes that we're playing, okay? So bear that in mind when you're learning how to play flams. Rebound stroke with one hand, tap with the other. And pay attention, try and hit the center of the pad, and so on and so on, okay? Now, uh, as an exercise, I would recommend just playing quarter notes with each hand, so maybe you could play one or two bars each hand, and again spend, I don't know, about a minute each, or two minutes altogether, something like this. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Work on that a little bit, and swap hands. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Okay? Once you start feeling comfortable with that, I would then set a timer, as I say, maybe play right-handed flams for one minute, left-handed flams for another minute, like that. Try and get used to doing this every single day. It'll really make the difference, uh, especially if you're just starting out with the instrument. I wouldn't try and uh, make yourself practice for an hour every day uh, unless you feel extremely strongly motivated to do that. I would try and get used to the idea of very, very religiously playing uh, five minutes or 10 minutes of exercises every single day. If on some days you do more time than that, that's brilliant. Um, but I feel that building up a routine with practicing is the, the most important thing you want to get used to doing at first. But you know, everyone's different and, and things work differently for different people. So your mileage may vary as they say on the internet. So uh, thank you very much for watching this. Uh, if you have any questions about this or the other videos I've made, please feel free to write to me in the comments. Uh, and also, if you have any suggestions of stuff you'd like me to cover in future videos, I'd be very interested to hear uh, what you'd like to learn about. Uh, at present, I'm really focusing on making videos for beginners and trying to help people uh, get some resources to understand how to develop some good basic technique as you're starting off with the instrument, because there seems to be a lot of uncertainty uh, with that uh, around, you know, people who are kind of teaching themselves off videos like this. So hopefully I can add something valuable to the process. Uh, I appreciate your time and attention. Uh, do the uh, liking, subscribing, uh, clicking, commenting stuff if you feel so inclined, it'd be much appreciated. Thanks again, and I'll see you in the next video.